If you want more from a man, for example, for him to spend more time with you or to text you more, if you want him to say, want me to join you when you mention you're going for a walk, if you want him to think more about you or to give you more attention than a cat would give to a laser pointer without you having to mention any of these or play hard to get or do other things that you will not feel good about, then you may like what's coming up in this video. The six behaviors I will discuss are very subtle and because they are not obvious, they are super powerful. We will talk about subtle intrigue, how to cultivate mystery through presence, quiet confidence, which is very powerful, selective ignoring, and more. My name is Geert, I'm an author. I also use the pen name Brian Knox. I write about dating and relationships and other topics. And the first concept I want to discuss is that this here takes time. And it should. If a woman meets a man and after the first or the second date, he's already clingier than a koala, he's texting her all the time, he wants to see her 24 hours a day and he cancels all of his other plans, then this may seem romantic and the consequence of a strong attraction, but it's not always a great sign. This is not a scene from a romantic movie, this is a parade of red flags. A lot of men that go too fast too soon are not drawn to the woman they just met, they are drawn to a projection of her. They've been lonely for a very long time and they are just trying to fill a void, or it's infatuation and not genuine attraction, whatever it is, it's often not good. It's supposed to take time. As he gets to know her and her personality, as her value rises in his mind because he's discovering what she's all about, slowly he will want to spend more and more time with her. And that takes weeks, not hours or days. With that said, let's start with number one, cultivating mystery through presence. I know you probably don't do that, but some women try the playing hard to get strategy to make a man give them more attention, to make a man like them. They remain elusive a little bit so he cannot catch them. Now, one of the many problems with that is they are pressing the wrong buttons. They are generating the wrong kind of attraction, the one that does not last. And quality men will obviously feel no attraction at all because they look through games like these. Presence is different. It piques his curiosity because when you are with him, you are fully present and there is no wall around your heart. So the moments you spend with him will count and you engage deeply, which he will enjoy a lot. But when you are not together, you give him the space to miss you. You are not continuously sending messages or trying to stay in touch in other ways. And the polarity between the full presence and the void of your absence creates mystery and a deep longing. He now has the time and the space to think about you, to wonder. And that's a very important word. The more he wonders about you, the more important you become to him. I wonder what she's doing right now. I wonder what she would think about. I wonder if she likes me or if she still likes me. Thoughts like these create a deeper bond, but a man will only have them when there is space. Your full presence at times and the void of your full absence. Because you are busy doing other things you are passionate about and are fully present with as well. He's not the center of your life. And as a consequence, he will put a lot of value on the time he can spend with you. He will be so on time for every date that it looks like he's trying to win the Nobel Prize in punctuality. If you text him something, he will not ignore it and will respond as soon as possible. And more. Number two, another important concept is the mystery part in the early stages of the relationship. And this is not about being secretive or aloof, but about revealing yourself in layers. Not being an open book during the first date, for example, but spoon-feeding yourself and sharing gradually. Now, this is important because this allows him the pleasure of discovering you over time instead of all at once. It's the difference between reading a book summary on the back of a book or discovering a great book page by page or watching the trailer versus the full movie. Now, one way to add some mystery is number three, and that is to use your quiet confidence. Loud confidence is actually not confident at all because people who use it are often trying to hide the fact that they don't feel confident. Loud people are often just looking for validation. Quiet confidence is more subtle. It's rooted in a deep sense of self-assurance that doesn't need constant external validation. It's very attractive. It means you are happy with who you are and with where you are in life, even when things are not perfect. And when are they ever perfect anyway? Quiet confidence is mostly found in the way you carry yourself, in the calmness of your demeanor. You, for example, do not have a need to prove yourself to anyone, but especially not to a man that you are interested in. 
because that always backfires. Plus, if he's the right guy for you, then there is no proving needed. Here are some examples of quiet confidence. Not being in a hurry. The relationship doesn't have to go somewhere fast. There is no scarcity. You send out the signal that you have plenty of men you can pick from without actually saying that. That would be loud confidence again. Another great example of quiet confidence is the ability to accept compliments gracefully. If the man you like says, wow, you look beautiful in that dress tonight, you do not dismiss it with a, oh, this old dress, you accept it with a simple thank you. And then your demeanor. If something does not go as planned, like for example, a dinner reservation that the restaurant totally forgot about while they are fully booked, you remain as calm as possible and you suggest a spontaneous alternative with a smile. Okay, no problem. A movie at the movie theater and popcorn for dinner it is then. And between us, don't worry about it, they probably have nachos there as well. Then, number four, a concept that is linked to all of this is subtle intrigue. You may have noticed that when you show a man that you are interested in him, and by that I do not mean that you want to be with him at all costs, but that you are just really curious about his life and his dreams and his passions and what makes him tick, that you are a bit intrigued by him, that he will in turn become a lot more interested in you. Now, why is that? Well, it's because he feels validated and valued. And that's a feeling that almost all men are longing for. They want to matter. They want to feel respected and important. Think about it. If you look at most behaviors of men as a group, as a gender, a lot of their actions are to attain these. To be respected, to matter, to impress certain people, and to be important to the people they care about. It's the prime reason why some men want an expensive watch or car, or to be good at a certain sport, or to win whatever they are partaking in. So if you make him feel important because you are genuinely intrigued by him, and you show that to him, you activate his desire to prove himself to you, to treat you well to prove that he's worth your time. Unless when he's a bad guy, but I hope you never want the attention of a bad guy that treats you badly, of course. But this subtle intrigue here, when it's present, will start going both ways. He will be intrigued by you because of it. And that's, for example, when you will suddenly have been talking for hours while losing track of time. And then number five is selective ignoring. In short, this is all about non-immediate emotional responses. When he, for example, texts you or calls you, but you were busy doing something else, you finished that thing first instead of dropping everything for him. Now, this is not a strategy or a game. You're not doing this to make him more interested in you. You're doing this because you are important and whatever you were busy with is important. And he becomes more interested in you as a side effect. But selective ignoring also means that you pick your battles. When you are dating a man, and especially when you are in a relationship with one, he will do a ton of things that you will not like. That's a promise. He will also say things that seem inconsiderate because he didn't think twice before saying it. Let me give you some examples. He made the decision to wash his shirt. But sadly, he got a bit too confident and decided to include your favorite blouse as well. Yeah, the blouse that now came out of the washing machine in a slightly different color and definitely in a different size. Or when he was home alone, he watched the next episode of a show you both are watching together. Yeah. What on earth was he thinking? Or he says, you look tired today. Ah, okay. Thank you, I guess. A great way to respond to this one, by the way, is to say, is that supposed to make me feel good or... And then watch him squirm. Uh, wait. <laughs> What's the correct answer to this question? I don't, I don't think there is one. How did I end up in this minefield? There's no way out without making it worse. Yeah, checkmate it is indeed. You should think twice before giving a comment nobody needs. Now, these are simple examples where you could get upset and nobody would blame you. But if you use selective ignoring here and you ignore both the upset emotions you may feel and what he did wrong, and you do not make a big deal out of it, you may be surprised of the positive effect this has on him. Instead of getting mad about the blouse, you can say, Thank you. Uh, I'm sure my young niece will be very happy with this blouse when I donate it to her. But next time you may want to read the label. He watched the next episode. Ah, yeah. Well, I don't know if you read the house rules, but in this house, the punishment is a 30-minute massage per episode. You look tired. Yeah, I know. That's because of my new hobby. Vampire hunting is no joke. Make a big deal out of the things that are a big deal, but try to let the small things go with humor and he will probably still learn his lesson. 
positive reinforcement can work really well. Now, for our sixth powerful concept, strategic autonomy. Strategic autonomy isn't just about doing your own thing. It's about building a life so enriching and full that he cannot help but want to be a part of it. When you cultivate your own interests and you maintain a certain independence even though you are dating him or are in a relationship with him, you can create a dynamic that not only draws him closer, but that also deepens his respect and admiration for you. So try to show him how passionate and engaged you are with the world around you. And in turn, he will see you as someone who adds a substantial value to his life. Remember, a truly great relationship is about two wholes coming together, not two halves making a whole. So keep living your best and most passionate life and then watch as he becomes more eager to spend time with you. And not because you need him to, but because he genuinely cannot resist your vibrant energy. And there you go. I hope you appreciated this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. And then make sure to visit brianknox.com for stuff I'm not sharing over here. Or go to Amazon where you can type my pen name Brian Knox in the search box to get a list of all of my books. I want to thank you for sticking around until the very end of this video. I really love it when you do that. And I hope to see you again in another video.